This is a lead up to Rasmus Hoyland's opening goal of a hat trick on his international debut against Finland in March 2023 at the Parken Stadium. If we look here as Alexander Barr is receiving the ball on the right flank or he's just about to, you can see on the far side that Rasmus Hoyland is positioned perfectly as a centre forward. A lot of the time, particularly with strikers who don't maybe score enough as they should, they often get drawn over to the side of the ball. So we may see someone like Gabriel Jesus or even someone like Anthony Martial drift over and look to receive the ball from either of these two players in a wide position. Now don't get me wrong, this can be the sort of movement that you want from your forward, particularly if you have players in behind the forward like Kai Havertz for example, who can make those runs into the positions where we see Hoyland now. But I'm going to explain why Hoyland's movement here, actually not just here but throughout the game in his international debut, has me so excited for the role he can play at United. But before I go any further, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out my Patreon podcast which will be linked below. But also if you want cheap good quality football jerseys for the new season or retro jerseys from the past four years then check out jerseyfever.com a link will be in my instagram bio and if you use coupon code Atlantis, you should get a discount as well i'll leave my instagram at the top of the description and comment section and a link will be in my instagram bio so as the ball is here with the right back Alexander Barr and he's about to cross the ball in, you can really start to see what I meant about the striker's movement. Here you can see that Hoyland is positioned between the opposition's right back and centre back on the far side. If he was instead positioned between the opposition's centre back and left back, he'd maybe be open to a 1-2 with Alexander Barr, but he wouldn't be in the sort of position to get on the end of this sort of cross. And so that's why with a centre forward like Gabriel Jesus for example, if he's going to pull near to link the play, you need an attacking midfielder behind who's going to burst into these sorts of positions. But as Alexander Barr is about to take a touch to take the ball down the line before he puts in the cross, you can see that both Hoyland and the Finnish centre-back can see where the danger is, the space between both centre-backs, between the goalkeeper and the defensive line. And so it really comes down to a game of cat and mouse in this situation, which is all about the striker's anticipation, his awareness, but also the actual speed of his body movement. You can see that Hoyland anticipates that Barr isn't going to whip in the cross first time, and instead is going to take the touch down the line. And so he's prepared for this, and so when this does happen, he is all already made an initial run but the Finnish centre back seems to be able to go with him and so what he does in order to get past the centre back is he checks his run really sharply that forces the centre back to stop as well but before he can recover Hoyland's already burst into that space the cross is absolutely fantastic from the right hand side but if you look at where both players are when Hoyland actually gets a touch on the ball to direct it into the net you can see that the centre back's well behind him and that's all created through his movement and I think this sort of movement and reading of the game inside of the box is really what distinguishes the strikers who can probably get between 12 and 15 Premier League goals to the ones that can get beyond 20. But how would this affect United tactically? Well, I think this means that Hoyland, when the ball is in the final third, rather than moving over to one of the flanks or dropping deep looking to link play, his job is going to be very similar, if not identical to Erling Haaland, which is to hold an advanced position not looking to get involved in play, but instead being ready for when the ball is ready to come into the box. From where you want to see Hoyland replicate that sort of movement he showed for his first goal in that hat-trick against Finland. Now, for example, if the ball gets moved over to the right side, let's say, for example, we've got Sancho as the right winger. We've got someone like Mason Mount on the inside, who I personally would start from the right, and we've got Dallor behind as well. And so in Ten Hag's 3-1-6 position system, it effectively becomes a 3-1-5-1. Because with Hoyland's movement and his finishing ability, you don't want him linking play and coming outside of the box. You want him playing between the width of the two goalposts, essentially like a traditional goal scorer and how we've seen Haaland play for Guardiola's Manchester City over the past year or so. But because Hoyland's going to be retaining a centrally advanced position, you need the players around the player with the ball, so the player with the ball at the moment is Jadon Sancho, and so you need Diego Dalot and Mason Mount to provide runs ahead of him, not just to provide a passing option, but also to drag players away. And I think we could see Mason Mount doing this a lot with that run between the opposition's left back and centre back, which is the exact type of run that we saw City from 2017 to about 2019 have so much success with, with David Silva and Kevin De Bruyne performing these underlapping runs perfectly. And like with those two, players like Mason Mount and Jadon Sancho have the quality to find Hoyland when they get into these sorts of positions. But this particular scenario is where I think both Diego Dalo, but also Mason Mount as well, can pick up a lot of assists, essentially backing up the play. And in this specific scenario, it's Dalor backing up the play. But like the Portuguese, Mason Mount also has a quality from these crossing positions as well. And so if a pass goes backwards, this is going to force the opposition's back line slightly higher up, increasing the space between the goalkeeper and the defensive line. And if you have players like Dalor and Mount who can deliver first-time crosses into these dangerous positions, this is exactly where Hoyland's going to pick up the sorts of goals that we saw him pick up for Denmark. 
And this type of goal is going to be particularly important because it's going to come against deep blocks. The main problem that United have with players like Marcus Rashford, even Anthony as well, is that the majority of their big chances often come when there's a quick transition in attack and they can burst in behind a high back line. However, most attacks that United have next season are going to come up against sides who drop back into a deep defensive unit, making it extremely congested in the final third and there's not going to be that space to move in behind. And so just as Pep has done with Haaland, I think Ten Hag needs to be trying to maximise these situations in order to not just get the best out of Rasmus Hoyland, but also score goals and win games that they probably wouldn't if they didn't have him in the side. With Rasmus Hoyland as a centre forward, you've got a player who can burst in behind the back line, we've seen him do this multiple times for Atalanta, and you've also got Marcus Rashford to his left who's even better at timing those runs in behind as well. Add on to this players in behind like Mason Mount and Bruno Fernandes who have the quality to thread through balls in behind the opposition's back line finding Hoyland, Rashford and even Anthony as well from the right and you have a potent counter-attack but this wasn't the issue for United last season. As we saw them thrive in these sorts of quick transition in attacking positions, the real problem came when creating chances against deep blocks which I think is the specific area where Hoyland will improve United the most. But it wasn't just his first goal in this game that had me excited for the role that Hoyland could potentially play for United. Here we see the centre back's going to play a pass, splitting the Icelandic midfield line. And you can see here that rather than dropping between the lines, looking to link the play as someone like Anthony Martial does, Hoyland is sitting between the two centre backs on the shoulder of the last defender. And when the ball goes into the Danish attacker between the lines, Hoyland's already making that run. He times it perfectly, and he's able to create this 1v1 opportunity for himself, which he probably should score, but it's a great save by the goalkeeper. But nonetheless, it shows a different type of goal scoring opportunity that United could create with Hoyland as a centre forward rather than a deeper lying forward like Martial. And his second goal in this game came from his movement inside of the box, this time from a set piece. The ball gets played into the near post and gets flicked onto the back post. And as the Danish player is going to head the ball back across to where Hoyland is, you can see that Hoyland has already anticipated where the opportunity can be created. And he's able to read the game quicker than the Icelandic centre-backs, but also has the agility and power to burst into that space and then shows tremendous willingness to get to the ball, throwing his head at it and knocking the ball into the empty net. And his third goal to complete the hat-trick once again demonstrates his fantastic movement inside of the box. You can see here the Danish winger has the ball on the far side and Hoyland once again takes up a fantastic goal-scoring position this time between the Icelandic centre-back and left-back, situated between the width of the two goalposts. And as Darabi is able to bypass his man and get to the byline, Hoyland once again makes an initial movement as if to make a move to receive the ball in the six-yard box, but because the Icelandic centre-back is cutting that cross off, he checks his run, pulls out, opening up a passing lane to receive the cut-back cross, from which despite a deflection he's able to control the ball before smashing the ball hard and low with fantastic technique and composure into the bottom corner to complete his hat-trick. And so I think if you watch Hoyland during this game, it gives a perfect representation of what he's going to offer United, with him being a different type of centre forward to Anthony Martial and he's going to provide those runs directly in behind the back line when United have the ball in the middle third, something that's definitely going to suit the abilities of Mason Mount and Bruno Fernandes. But also when the ball is in the final third, because Hoyland is going to be holding a more advanced position away from the play, rather than directly looking to get involved with the attack, this is going to allow him to use his movement inside of the box to create more goal scoring opportunities for himself in a similar kind of fashion to how Erling Haaland does for Manchester City. And I think putting this type of centre forward into Ten Hag's team will dramatically change Ten Hag's attack in the long term and in the short term it all depends how quickly Hoyland and the system around him can adapt. So let me know what you thought of Hoyland's performance in this game for Denmark. You can subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications when my videos come out. Check out some of my other videos and the link to my Patreon which will be in the description and follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well.